All actors, except dubbing actors, have the luxury of rehearsing before they go in and record or shoot something. We don't. We just do it. We just go in and we do it. That's hard. Hi, I'm Sarah Natacheni. I'm an actor, and I'm the voice of Ash Ketchum on Pokemon, as well as the voices of Bonieri and Rosalia and Miss Magus. As a voice actor, I've spent a lot of my career dubbing, which is the process of taking a foreign language piece of content, film or TV show, and reinterpreting it in English. Like this. Hope you had fun, Ash! Sure did! We went diving with a Sharpedo, saw lots of Pokemon I've never seen before! Yeah! But dubbing is not as easy as it may look. So today, I'm going to be breaking down the techniques I've used to help me master my craft. There are two main types of foreign language dubbing, animation dubbing and live action dubbing. Animation dubbing gives actors a lot more freedom because the animated faces aren't quite as nuanced as human faces. So actors get to convey all that nuance through their vocal performances while staying true to the animation. Animation dubbing is being done all over the world because children aren't reading subtitles. So the Lion King that we grew up with in America isn't the same Lion King they grew up with in Germany. They grew up with a German Lion King and it is spectacular. Live action dubbing is much harder to do. A great live action dubbing actor fully embodies and imitates the actor on screen. To make it a believable dub, you have to capture every little eye roll, every, every flourish, every tiny little nuance that a human being can make and is making on that screen, you have to imitate it. Regardless of what type of dubbing you're interested in, here are some techniques that have helped me get to where I am today. Learn to imitate performances on the fly without having to watch it too much. All actors, except dubbing actors, have the luxury of rehearsing before they go in and record or shoot something. We don't. We just do it. We just go in and we do it. It's hard. When you're imitating a performance, you have to look for absolutely everything that actor is doing. If they're turning and kind of like looking over their shoulder, they might strain a little bit. So you gotta capture that strain. If they're kind of like, doing that, you have to capture that. If they're whispering, you have to be very attuned to the volume of their voice and the power behind what's coming out. For example, check out this film clip. You didn't know David was going to kill you. You didn't know how I pleaded with him, how I begged for your life. You didn't know how I convinced him that sending you to prison would serve just as well. You thought I was against you like all the rest. So as you can see in the clip, at the end there, she has a really interesting emotional shift where she seems almost kind of sneaky. And she takes a few little breaths that you have to match. You thought I was against you. An actor could make the mistake of making this too dramatic. So the key to a good dub on this is matching her energy. Let's watch how I dub it into Russian. Ты не знал, что Дэвид собирался тебя убить. Ты не знал, как я его умоляла чтобы спасти твою жизнь. Ты не знал, как я его уговаривала, что посадить тебя в тюрьму было бы достаточно. Ты думал, что я против тебя, как все остальные. By imitating the actor on screen rather than just saying the line whichever way I want to say it, I'm producing a much more believable dub, and that's the goal. So take a little piece of a movie or TV show, take one line and start imitating it. Play it, imitate it, play it, imitate it. Get every little breath, every little nuance. And if you can do that, you're on your way to being a good dubber. Another thing I recommend is performing material that requires a lot of movement without moving too much. You're in a small booth with a microphone, so even if your character is running or falling into an abyss or making love, these are all things that you have to feel in your body without moving your feet at the very least. You can't be running around if your character is running around. Not only is it impossible to stay on mic if you're doing that, you're also going to be making noise with your feet. So your feet have to be planted on the ground while you're also running. It's, it takes some practice. The worst thing you can do is dub over a character that's being really active and sound like you're sitting down in a four by five booth. That's a bad dub. So to get into an active scene, say my character is running, I'll start running before I even do anything. I'll actually take my feet off the ground before we do the take and I'll start running in place and I'll get a little bit out of breath because I don't actually work out that much and then beep, beep, beep. And then I plant my feet and I'm already kind of out of breath and I start talking as if I just ran into something or as if I'm still running. And that's kind of, that's kind of how you do it. Falling into a pit, you can't really prepare for that because the character doesn't know it's going to happen. Say so you guys are the mic, right? And I'm like, 
I'm I'm fall I'm walking over the edge. Whoa, 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 whoa! You gotta stay on mic, but feel in I feel it kind of in my torso. I feel like off balance, but I'm not full I'm not falling over, obviously. You don't want to fall over in the booth, it's weird. So I'm doing as much of the action as I can while also making sure that the audio isn't affected. Here's a cool tip, just watch great dubs. You'll be able to see how the actor is connecting to the original actor and what they're doing to make everything feel seamless and natural. Here are some of my favorite dubs. Uh, Animation-wise, Ernest and Celestine was nominated for an Oscar. Absolutely beautiful, funny film. I highly recommend it. Uh, Mirai is an anime that was also nominated for an Oscar. MFKZ is sick. Just watch it. My three live-action recommendations are Money Heist, Dark, and The Rain. They're really good. Netflix has reported that up to 85% of viewers are watching dubs over subs. And one thing you should know about subtitles, um, they're not that authentic. A lot of people say this and a lot of people are gonna yell at me in the comments, but hang on a second, just stay with me for a minute. Subtitles are truncated. Subtitles have to fit on the screen. And subtitles take you away from the picture above. They make you keep reading, so your eyes are constantly shifting, so you're not picking up everything that there is to pick up. That's why dubs are preferred, and they're preferred all over the world. There are actually laws in France that prohibit the import of foreign films without dubbing them into French. And other countries, which have been dubbing for a long time, their dubbing actors are very famous, and they have dubbing awards. A certain dubbing actor will actually be the voice of an on-camera actor throughout that actor's career. So the actors who play Robert De Niro in their local languages play Robert De Niro through his entire career. It's new in America because we export a lot more than we import, but now with the new streaming services, we're importing a lot of foreign content. That's very exciting. Now that we're importing, we have to be certain not to make a dub too dubby. If a dub is dubby, that means that there's jarring diction and awkward phrasing and translation and just uh, bad sync. So it's hard to produce a great dub, but when they're done well, that's the best way to watch something from a foreign country. The next piece of advice is super important, trust your director. Dubbing is the only type of acting where you're not directly working with your scene partner. In animation, in live action, in, in every other form of acting, in theater, you're playing off another actor and you're free to make those choices in the moment and that's where a lot of the magic comes from. Um, but in dubbing, it's quite a bit more strict. So that's why you have to trust your director because they know what your partner is going to do. They know what the other actors sound like. You may not even know who the other actors are. So when your director tells you to do a certain read, just trust them, be cool. And for my next tip, practice being a wide array of characters. The more characters you can believably do, the more you're gonna work because every producer wants to hire an actor that can cover four or five characters rather than just one. In dubbing and in animation, playing 30 characters is pretty common. I play about 30 characters on Pokemon. Chansey, Chinshu, Boniri, Burmy, uh, Badoo, uh, Esper, Diglett, uh, Starly, Staraptor, Staravia, Roselia, Roseraid, Wingull, uh, uh, many others. Boniri, did I say that one? Boniri's my favorite. Wingull. How can you practice getting into all these different characters? Do some impressions. Find some great characters, great actors, and start doing impressions of them. Even if you do a bad impression, you might come out of there with a character. Just discover your range. Discover your lowest point. Discover if you can talk like that for a long time. Use, use your really throaty voice and see what's in there. Use your really nasal voice and see what's in there. Discover your comfortable range and discover your uncomfortable range. I have some characters that are kind of in this range, and that's something that I can sustain for a whole season or three seasons of work, but Or maybe I just discovered that I can. I don't know. <laughs> if it hurts, don't do it. Don't do it at all. Even if it's just a tiny little character and a certain thing, because you could injure your voice and that is gonna hurt your career possibly forever. It's also interesting to note how personalities can affect different voices. I was in production on two shows. I was playing Twinkle, one of the leads in Super 4, and Marion, one of the leads in Robin Hood, at the same time. And these two characters sit in the same place in my range. Baby dragon slobber? Oh no! It's getting worse and worse! 
they have almost the same voice. What sets them apart is their personalities and the way they relate to other characters. So understand that sometimes you're gonna play characters that sound alike, but it's okay. Watching shows with captions on. Watching shows with captions on is very helpful for an actor because you're basically watching the script go by as you're watching the performance at the same time. And this makes it easier to understand all the choices an actor is making in the moment. When you walk into a dubbing studio, you haven't seen the material probably, and you definitely haven't seen the script. You have to be able to pick up a performance and all the nuance of that performance like that. The more attuned you are to the tone, power, and intent behind a performance, the better you'll be at dubbing. And this is also why I actually don't remember the plot points of certain shows, because I'm just watching for performance. I think watching things with captions is a masterclass in acting. Here's the biggest tip I can give you for dubbing. Take acting classes. You are not getting in the dubbing door unless you're an actor. You are competing with people who have been acting their entire lives who are trying to get in the dubbing door. You're gonna need to know how to do an original performance just as well as you're gonna need to know how to imitate one. And that's what acting class is for. To control your emotion, to summon emotion, to, to understand how you're moving, to understand the space around you, to be hyper aware of your body and your mind, that's what you're gonna learn in acting class and that is what is absolutely imperative to dubbing. Also, a lot of people who are taking acting classes are gonna to wanna to rush right into producing a demo and getting jobs and getting in there. Um, be careful, don't rush your demo. Don't go without any practice or without any education. Rush to a demo producer and say, let's make it and start sending it out to studios because it is very specialized. And if you make a demo that's not that great, it's gonna take a while for studios to look at you again, like years. Here's my last piece of advice. Be grateful and know your rates, know your worth. Know the worth of the job that you're doing. A lot of new actors don't realize their worth and the value that they're adding to the projects that they're doing. Let me give you an analogy. I make you a sandwich. You eat the sandwich, you don't really think about the sandwich ever again. I make you a TV show, you're watching it every single week, you're showing it to your family, to your kids, you're dressing up on Halloween as these characters. The work that you're doing will outlive you and the influence that you have will outlive you. You're not doing that with a sandwich. So that is why I'm saying this, know your worth. It is your job to understand the scope and usage of your work before you start doing the job. And if there's any hint, if that, if that studio has projects that have gone to, to big networks or to big streaming platforms, that's your hint to say, hang on a second, where is this going and how will I be compensated when it lands on those networks? We all know the expression, everybody's gotta start somewhere, right? And you are gonna start as a non-union actor and that's great and that's fine. And you are so welcome and encouraged to do projects that are going on YouTube channels that don't have millions of subscribers. Small projects, have at it, have fun, do great work, put it on your reel if it's really great and submit that to studios. But once you start doing work that's for broadcast or streaming services, that stuff's gotta be union, you gotta be protected. That is a professional tier of work and you should be compensated for that fairly. If you have any questions, there are many Facebook groups devoted to answering your questions. Voice Actors of NYC on Facebook is a great resource. You don't have to be in NYC. If you don't have an agent, ask the group. They will always have something to, to offer. Ultimately, the key formula to being a great professional actor is being great, yes, but also knowing your worth and not working for free just because you love it. So those are all my dubbing tips. These help me along my journey. It's not the easiest business to get into and stay in, but I hope these little tidbits can help you along yours. Hi, Pikachu. I love you. That's your cat, I'm guessing? He sure is. Hi, I'm Sarah Natacheni, and I'm the voice of Ash Ketchum, and this is my buddy, Pikachu. <laughs> Bye, I love you.